Good afternoon, Howard Wig for Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. We're going to insulate you with insulational talk today. Very, 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 very relevant. Gives me great pleasure to introduce my guest of the day, Sonny Lessery. He's the products manager or something like that for Admore Hawaii. They supply all kinds of building materials, especially for residential. So welcome to the program. Yeah, thanks for Sunny. having me. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to focus today on insulation and we're, we're going to do a video soon, but first let me address what is on most people's mind, namely building products and fire resistance. I was in New York during the Marco Polo fire and it made headlines li literally in New York City. That's how serious this thing was. Right. And of course, we have the whole debate about uh, to sprinkle or not to sprinkle. But what about some of the products that we will be talking about and uh, their, their resistance to, to fire? Yeah, there, there are uh, a bunch of different types of insulation that can help with the spread of fire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, depending on a bunch of different variables, uh, whether it comes to cost, um, R value, things like that. But um, what's commonly used in homes, residential, and also commercial is uh, normally three types. There's a fiberglass, mm -hmm. uh, stone wool, or mineral wool, and then uh, different types of foam composite boards. Mm -hmm. um, out of the three, uh, stone wool or uh, rock wool, mineral wool, is probably the best when it comes to fire. Um, that product is made out of basalt rock. Mm -hmm. um, what's interesting is that um, there was a chemist that uh, visited the Big Island 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. He saw <clears throat> a volcanic eruption, and when the wind hits the lava, it created Pele's hair. Mm -hmm. And he yeah. saw Pele's hair all over the place. So on rocks and trees and everything else. And somehow he had a eureka moment. Mm -hmm. And he went back to Poland and played around in his little garage slash, <laughs> you know, laboratory. And that's how we have what's called stone wool by a, a company called Roxol uh, today. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that a hundred years yeah. and it kind of yeah. comes full circle back to the islands. Mm -hmm. But um, that's one uh, of the best ways to help protect yourself from fire. And, and as you know, you know, minutes, seconds count. Yes. So um, with that stone wool um, product, it doesn't really do anything until it gets over 2,300 degrees. Is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? Fahrenheit. 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 So that's pretty darn hot. It's 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 extremely hot. Yeah. Uh, whereas other products will fail um, quicker. Uh, the stone wool product lasts up to 2,300 degrees. So mm -hmm. it definitely helps. Um, in the case that there is a fire like there was at the Marco Polo. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's probably a good segue. You have a, a video from that company. Why don't we roll that video? Because it, it talks about insulation in the wider context of uh, global warming and certainly saving uh, money on, on, your, on the mainland heating and cooling. Here we're just uh, concerned with cooling. The energy consumer. You believe in short showers and keeping the lights off when they're not needed. Water and electricity may take a bite out of your budget, but they're not even close to being the worst offender. That job belongs to heating and cooling. In fact, keeping your building comfortable all year round makes up two thirds of the typical energy bill. Insulation is what keeps temperatures stable. And when installed properly, it can cut a building's utilities bill in half or save the average family $750 a year. And there are plenty of federal tax credits on top of that too. Insulation starts working as soon as it's in place and it lasts for the lifetime of the building. But saving money on utilities is just the beginning. By making your home energy efficient, you're making an indelible contribution to economic development and job creation. When you lower your energy costs, you're able to spend that money elsewhere in the economy, thus creating demand and jobs. 
Every dollar spent on efficiency programs generates between four and eight dollars of GDP. In 2011, it was found that certain industries saved more than 14 billion dollars with energy efficiency improvements, which in turn led to more investment and more job growth. Each million dollars reinvested creates up to 57 job years. That's one job for one year for 57 years. So make the commitment to save money and help the economy. Use the best solution for energy efficiency. Insulate your home and building properly. For more information, please visit Roxel.com. Back again. Apologies for uh, no sound on that, but I think the graphics were self... Oh, there was sound on the video. Okay. So the this gets right to the cockles of my heart, namely energy efficiency. Right. When we reduce energy use in the first place, we keep those energy dollars in our economy so that we can, or in this case, the, the homeowners who are saving hundreds and hundreds of dollars per year, could even be thousands of dollars per year, is keeping that money in his or her pocket and is able to reinvest it into the economy. That's absolutely correct. And yeah. I think, you know, one of the things, especially here um, in Hawaii, is that uh, until very recently, our homes were, you know, mm -hmm. uh, single wall construction homes that mm -hmm. weren't meant mm -hmm. to be air conditioned. And the company I work for is an HVAC distributor. Mm -hmm. um, so knowing that, I think it's very important that we try to help as much as possible um, to find ways to help insulate those homes that are not adequately insulated. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. whether they have insulation or not, the homeowner or consumer is not thinking about that. They just are thinking about trying to get cooler. Yeah, so they put in an yeah. air condition into home that's not necessarily meant for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of uh, wasted energy which equals dollars, and especially here in Hawaii, that's important to uh, Very save as much important. As you can. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like an, a, any home or building that permits the sun's heat to come in through the roof, the walls, the windows, and air conditions to coo trying to cool an oven, an oven that's on with a, an ice cube. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really counterproductive, and then you you get into the health and the comfort aspect of things too where I've heard about people feeling the heat emanating in from the walls or the roof and the cold air blasting so you've got heat coming from here cold air from there and it's really a an unpleasant experience and if you're trying to enjoy yourself or the kids are trying to do homework not good uh, now that I'm thinking about it a full an air conditioning system that's full on is probably making noise also. Right, so. and and so not only does insulation help with the comfort of the mm -hmm. home, that's uh, a key word that they use all the time mm -hmm. in those um, uh, scenarios. Like you said, you have the hot coming through the, the cold air with the air condition and you're not mm -hmm. quite comfortable, mm -hmm. right? It's, yeah. a, it's a little off. Mm -hmm. um, but not only does insulation help with the comfort of your home, but it also helps with acoustics as well. Mm -hmm. So as you mentioned, uh, air conditioning can make noise depending on where it's out uh, in the home. Um, there's different types of air conditioning units, right? Split systems like the Fujitsu that we uh, represent or other um, central AC systems mm -hmm. and things like that. but Insulation helps um, in a variety of different areas, and again, depending on the type of insulation, whether it's fiberglass, stone wool, or foam, everyone has its own case to be made on why you would use one. The, the most popular um, here locally is fiberglass. Mm -hmm. um, we represent a, a company called Knopf, but there are other fiberglass companies that uh, make the product mostly out of recycled glass and sand. Mm -hmm. um, and the process that it goes through uh, helps with uh, insulation. Um, it has, I think, a melting point of about 1,200 degrees. So to a certain extent, it does help with fire as well. Um, but um, t that versus a stone wool tends to uh, be a little bit more economical because of the freight getting it here. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, you know we pay freight dollars on apples, uh, mm -hmm. like everything else. So, 
um, what what you can do with fiberglass is kind of really condense it. Oh, you so can. That oh, I, it, th I thought you couldn't. I thought it. When, once it was condensed, it would not re-expand. No, so with uh, fiberglass insulation, what happens in the factory um, is that they have it packed in, in individual ba bags, mm -hmm. and then what they'll do is they'll have four or five bags packed into a bundle, and all of that is kind of vacuum packed mm -hmm. so that you can fit um, about three times as much fiberglass with the same R value or thickness mm -hmm. uh, as you can with a stone wool. So okay. stone wool, you know, does a much better uh, job when it has to do with fire protection. Um, you know, multi-resident units, things like that. Uh, but fiberglass does tend to come in a little bit cheaper because, you know, we can fit three times the amount in a standard uh, shipping container to get and, it over from. And the when arm. you unwrap it, does it indeed expand back to its original dimensions? Yes, and actually, oh. there's a test that um, kind of talks about that but it does have the ability to uh, expand once it's out of the bag mm -hmm. and and in fact mm -hmm. if uh, you go and see it um, installed in a home or a commercial building what tends to happen once you kind of cut through half of that bag it automatically kind of mm -hmm. um, explodes out of the bag oh, okay, okay. Um, and comes to the minimum thickness that you need for depending on the R value mm -hmm. that's called out mm -hmm. yeah and another for centrally air-conditioned homes, be, be they new or uh, re retrofitted, uh, the better the home is insulated, in this case we're just talking about the roof and the walls, number one, the smaller you can size your air conditioning system, and number two, you can turn it down instead of being on high, or whatever the setting is, you can turn it down to low. Absolutely, yeah. And yeah. also, we have, uh, we're, it's kind of hard to believe right now because we're in the middle of uh, summer and we're, we're feeling <laughs> it, but we do have nice uh, winters. If your home is nicely air conditioned, it's very possible to keep it naturally cool. You know, we have good window space in our homes and you can simply not have the air conditioning on during, during the winter. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's one of those things um, where a lot of people, uh, myself included, you know, driving in my my car coming out mm -hmm. here um uh, especially today today's a little warm yep, so yep. you know crank the ac up and feel mm -hmm. comfortable um, a lot of times what happens is people get used to the just turning on the air conditioning because they mm -hmm. have it mm -hmm. right but sometimes going to work in the you know early morning it's nice and cool you know i have to think about mm -hmm. just leaving mm -hmm. it off open the windows and you know not yeah. having to worry so much yeah. so it, it's interesting how that works but yeah, the uh, um, there are companies out there that are building um, homes that are using so the third type of insulation I, I mentioned earlier, uh, foam insulation. Mm -hmm. uh, spray foam insulation does a really good job of getting in all the kind of nooks and crannies yeah. mm -hmm. that are in the home, that are mm -hmm. in the wall, that's in the ceiling, and by using that type of uh, spray foam insulation you can downsize the unit like you mentioned mm -hmm, earlier. Mm -hmm. um, so out on the Eva Plain Gentry Homes does a really good job of doing that and they brought you know the air conditioning from what I believe was a four to five ton down mm -hmm. to a ton, ton and a half. I mean that's a that's a considerable amount of energy savings. There. Yeah, yeah. But but you're you're touting the competition here. <laughs> <laughs> well it's one of those things to where um, you know we Originally, we had uh, just fiberglass and stone wool. We now have a line of uh, spray foam insulation as well. Um, and part of the reason for that was, you know, in, in sales, um, you want to be able to get uh, what the customer wants, yeah. right? You have kind of ideas uh, on what you think might work best. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes, um, and especially in the case with uh, the guys out in Gentry, Bob and McKibben, you know, they're uh, on the forefront yeah, of kind of looking at the newest, latest, greatest thing. Mm -hmm. And they were able to kind of um, ask us to see if there was some other things out there. And, and we found a spray foam that works very well for them. Now, we need to take a break, but let's uh, resume the conversation on, on foam Perfect. over there. So this is Think Tech Hawaii, Howard Wig, Code Green, Sunny Lessery of Admore HVAC, back in a moment.
Welcome again, Howard Wig, Code Green. My guest today is Sonny Lessery of Edmore HVAC, and we are talking insulation. Who would have known that insulation could be so fascinating? <laughs> so we broke off the last conversation <clears throat> about talking about foam, foam spray, and I'll just relate my own experience. I was out on a building site in the Eva Plains. It was a few years ago, and I remember it like it was yesterday. The walls are open. The exterior wall has been put in, and then there are the studs or the beams going mm -hmm. in the wall. And the technician has this big bottle of something or other in a nozzle, and he sprays it in the cavity between the beams, and it starts out just maybe a half inch thick, and then if the guy is really good, say the beam is three and a half inches thick, mm -hmm. that foam will expand to exactly three and a half inches because he's got the touch. Right. And he wins the approval of his supervisor because that foam is not cheap. Yes. And you don't want to be spray or, or cutting off ex excess foam there. Right. Yeah. But as you pointed out, foam does get to all the little nooks and crannies, and it does do a... a better job of insulating the other side of the coin is that it is more expensive right i think um what's interesting is that with you know the different types of insulation mm -hmm. um and especially uh, you know up until recently insulation has been one of those things that the guy that's late on the job or the guy that mm -hmm. is uh, low on the totem pole has to go deal with the itchy stuff. <laughs> um, there's been a lot of advances in the technology, um, changing the binders, for example. So originally they would have petroleum-based binders and the binder is the glue that holds the fibers together. Mm -hmm. um, back in the day, fiberglass uh, was very tough to work with, itchy, dusty. Mm -hmm. um, pr probably not good for the health of the worker either. And, and what happened yeah. recently mm -hmm. is that they changed over to a bio-based binder um, where it's a derivative of corn uh, mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. Kanoff insulation and others have followed Kanoff's, uh, I guess, um, stance to want to change that mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, what they didn't know was going to happen, but what what did happen was it became much less itchy, mm -hmm. much less dusty, um, and so much easier to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, but to your point with the spray foam insulation, because it's able to kind of fit into the nooks and crannies, it does a, mm -hmm. a much better job of keeping that envelope of the home tight. Mm -hmm. And as you know, with uh, the different building codes, uh, IECC 2015, I think, mm -hmm. um, has talked about doing blower door tests, which oh, yes. is not something that we're used to here in Hawaii. Yep, yep. Um, and I think what's going to happen, at least through kind of the initial stages, is that um, the contractors that are doing the installation of just typical fiberglass insulation, mm -hmm. they're going to um, realize that it's not just trying to stuff things in the wall. Mm -hmm. There's a certain means and methods that should be done um, and just to give you an example, if you have a one inch gap with fiberglass insulation, you mm -hmm. cut the R value in half. I so wouldn't doubt it. yeah. it's, it's very important that it's done the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, spray foam allows you to do a really good job of keeping that envelope tight, but it mm -hmm. is um, price prohibitive for most guys to get into. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so fiberglass and stone wool is another good option. It just has to be done right. Mm hmm. Yeah, there, there's a grade one, grade two, grade three of uh, fiberglass installers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, I and think, the, uh, the energy code used to prohibit grade one. Is grade one the worst, I think? or I think, uh, well, I think grade one is, is the best, so yes, grade three okay. is probably what yeah. they... And they permitted grade uh, two, and now I was just, I just got back from an energy codes conference, and, and for the next line of codes, they're going to prohibit grade two. Also, you must get that fiberglass in there, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think it's important because, you know, when we're talking about energy savings, right, mm -hmm. once you put up a home, mm -hmm. it's there. Yep. And and it's not like you're going to be taking off the wall to redo the insulation. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, I think it's important that we get the insulation done correctly. Precisely, um, yeah. And it's good that, you know, with the new energy code coming on board, it'll have some checks and balances to make sure that things are done and, and kept to a certain standard. Ab absolutely. And time is fleeting away very rapidly. Why don't we run the second video on, on fiberglass insulation and t take a look at that. Increasing insulation in both residential and commercial buildings is a very effective way to lower CO2 emissions and do it at a cost savings. Many industries are beginning to look at not only the products that they deliver to a consumer, and in this case, delivering a product that can save energy, but looking at what is required to make that material. Is there an opportunity by using recycled content to lower both the energy cost in producing the material and, but almost equally importantly, the amount of waste that you save. We have increased our recycled content to levels we were told that were technically impossible. Over 50% recycled content from the streets of major metros delivered by train to minimize transportation impacts. We're very proud of that. Every step to lower the amount of waste that we produce and lower the amount of energy associated with creating a product and then creating a product that saves energy has a sort of a win-win-win sort of opportunity associated with it. So using recycled content in those cases where you save production energy and lower the landfill burden has this opportunity to save money and save energy in multiple ways. Ecos, the binder technology that, that we've implemented, actually improves our, our emission from our stacks, from our manufacturing facilities dramatically. It's a bio-based product. It doesn't contain petroleum derivatives, therefore it, uh, it's renewable. Insulation is hugely important with regard to tackling climate change from the standpoint it's an existing technology. We know it has a huge impact. There are several independent studies that have shown that insulation is the most cost-effective way to reduce carbon. Wow. Talk about resource efficiency. Both the previous product and this made out of not maybe not 100% recycled material, but making very, very, very good use of glass. And is this product also bound with the, the, the corn? Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah. bio-based, uh, they call it a bio-based product. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it's a derivative of corn, and as you know, corn syrup can be kind of sticky to mm -hmm. the touch. Oh, yes. So um, they were able to uh, create this binder that is much more efficient. It takes out the formaldehyde and mm -hmm. the phenols and the artificial mm -hmm. colors, um, acrylics. And, and just makes it much more sustainable. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. The other thing that's nice is that um, when you talk about you know resource efficiency and r recycled content and things of that nature, um, it's important to kind of look at uh, pre-consumer, post-consumer. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, and, and what's nice with uh, Kanoff is they source uh, most of their recycled content uh, as post-consumer. So what that mm -hmm, means is mm -hmm. bottles of beer or wine that would have mm -hmm. normally gone into the landfill is used in their um, manufacturing process. So um, they, they actually got to a bottleneck where they cannot source enough. A, a, a bottleneck, so speak, A yeah. bottleneck, so to speak. Well, yeah, you know, well. that <laughs> brings good. up something very important. As we all know, we have a bottle recycling law here but as I understand it, those bottles are just, cre they're crushed and they're creating huge mountains of crushed glass somewhere out in the, the Eva Plains. Mm. Why, and you have a manufacturing plant in California, why don't we just put it on a barge and s ship it over there? Mm. The answer is that the glass, as I understand it, is worth about $20 a ton and shipping costs about $20 a ton. Uh. But if they've got a bottleneck of supply, what yeah. the heck? Let's let's feed it in. Yeah, there. it couldn't it couldn't yeah. hurt asking, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's a great idea, and and just being able to use the resources, um, you know, here in Hawaii, people uh, 
like to have their pawhana pa mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. uh, drink or two. Um, mm -hmm. So we probably have a decent amount of recycled uh, oh, we, glass sitting uh, out there. As I understand it, we, we've got mountains of the stuff. Wow. I, I will definitely check on it. Yeah. And uh, in the video, I saw the workers working without uh, masks. Mm -hmm. And you generally associate fiberglass with the itchy and not so healthy stuff. I mean, that really is glass and there's really fibers there. Right. But, and I think those were the old days and you'd hear about the workers in the uh, fiberglass plants getting uh, you know, some serious lung issues. But I think and that, that comes under the broader heading of IAQ, indoor air quality. Right. Yeah. yeah, and, th and that's interesting that you um, saw that on the video. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people might not have kind of seen that um, in the uh, Knopf Shelbyville plant, um, which is out in Indiana. It's actually the, the world's largest fiberglass manufacturing facility. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that um, not only do they not need uh, respiratory, um, but they actually can work in short sleeve shirts, and I believe they can go to, sh uh, to work with shorts as well. And what changed really was that binder system. Again, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with that petroleum-based binder, it had a lot of the bad stuff mm -hmm, in it, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's a petroleum-based binder. Um, it's got formaldehyde and a lot of other stuff that you don't necessarily want around. Yep, yep. Uh, so changing to this bio-based binder that is a natural product um, has really changed things for the better. And what's interesting is that um, it wasn't something that they were going yeah, after. I, I, it just kind of happened I, as a, a, a good circumstance. A positive unintended consequence. Yeah. And then I would circle that back to IAQ, in better indoor air quality for the home dweller. And unfortunately, on that cheery note, we must bid fond adieu. Sonny Lessery of Edmore HVAC, thank you so much. And... Who could have known that insulation would be so fascinating? This is Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. See you next time.